Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this Tuesday afternoon on U Central News. I'm Jackson Robottom. And I'm CJ Craig. And we wanted to bring you an update concerning the fire in the library building last night. And no one was injured and students and staff were evacuated as the fire was taken care of. Students still have access to the library building as of right now. And as many of you know, President Biden recently opened the application to student debt forgiveness. This month, a beta version of the application is available on the website and on the app. UCentral's Miracle Garrett has more on what this means for students and what they think. The student loan forgiveness application is official and now open for use. On Monday, President Joe Biden announced his plan to help over 43 million Americans receive debt relief from student loans. In the student loan forgiveness plan, Biden promises to cancel up to $10,000 in student debt for individuals making less than $125,000 a year. The student loan forgiveness application is official and now open for use. On Monday, President Joe Biden announced his plan to help over 43 million Americans receive debt relief from student loans. In the student loan forgiveness plan, Biden promises to cancel up to $10,000 in student debt for individuals making less than $125,000 a year or up to $20,000 of debt relief for Pell Grant recipients also making less than $125,000 a year. Private loans are not affected by this plan, but other federal loans such as PLUS loans borrowed by graduate students or parents may be eligible. Over 54% of undergraduates have student debt and over 12 million students have now applied for the debt relief. The deadline to apply is December 31st, 2023. The website can be viewed on desktop or mobile at studentaid.gov. From Edmond, Oklahoma, I'm Miracle Garrett with U Central News. Thank you very much, Miracle. And just as a reminder, you can find that application on the app or by using the link at the bottom of your screen. And switching gears now, we've got a lot of events going on on campus. One of note is the Think Pink Prom happening on Thursday. You're asked to dress in pink for breast cancer awareness, so find your pink ties and dresses and head down to ballrooms A and B. Tickets are $5 at the event, and it starts at 7 p.m. And UCO Central Pantry has launched its new Bronco Bites program. This program takes food leftovers from Ayer's Kitchen and places them into the Bronco Bites locations outside of the Central Pantry. Any that are interested can opt in to the Bronco Bites notification system to receive a text or email when food is delivered to the Bronco Bites refrigerator. Students, faculty, and staff can take meals on the go after 2 p.m. each day. And here's something good. Showing a little effort can make a big difference. UCO officer Jaden Freeman, who you can see on your screen holding a thumbs up, found a student who broke her ankle while grocery shopping. Once she was loaded into an ambulance, Freeman took the $200 worth of groceries she had just bought and put them away in her dorm at her request. And a lot of good happening there, and we are in the heart of September at the moment, and we have seen some cooler temperatures in the past few days, but things are not going to be staying the same. CJ is at the weather wall and is going to give us a first look at what we could be expecting. CJ, what do you have for us? Oh, that's right, Jackson. What we have today, uh, well, we've been seeing some cooler weathers recently. Uh, with the uh, temperature starting to drop around the state of Oklahoma, especially here in Edmond, sitting here at about 56 degrees right now. Under fair skies, not a lot of clouds in the sky right now. Winds are blowing northwest at about 12 to 20 miles per hour. However, we could see some gusts up to 25 or 30 miles per hour, so be very aware of that as you're going about your activities tonight. Humidity as well, not very much, sitting about 17% humidity, and it is feeling like 56. So overall, a very chilly day here in Edmond. Uh, very far from what we've been used to seeing over the past couple of weeks with the warmer weather. So let's go ahead and take a look at our weather headlines for tonight or this week. We do have a freeze warning coming in tonight, so the temperatures will drop down below freezing for the first time this fall season. Uh, so that's why that freeze warning is in place. And the winds are going to be dying down as we move throughout the rest of the week. So as we go into the weekend, those winds are going to be dying down just a little bit, uh, so they won't be as prevalent going into next week. And we will have warmer temperatures going into this weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are going to start to see the temperatures slowly climb back up into the 80 degree mark. So that's all that I have right now, Jackson. I'm going to send it back to you at the desk. 
All right, a person of interest in the killing of four Oklahoma men found dismembered in a river last week was taken into custody in Florida today. Joe Kennedy was arrested on unrelated charges of grand theft of a motor vehicle. Police say that the district attorney and sheriff of Okmulgee County are beginning the process of extraditing Kennedy back to Oklahoma. And the war in Ukraine has been affecting millions, especially the refugees. U Central's Maury Blair has the details. Human rights officials from Russia and Ukraine met Monday, but the war in Ukraine continues. Suicide drone attacks damaged infrastructure and left four Ukrainians dead Monday. Meanwhile, Russian troops have moved into Belarus, just north of Ukraine, posing another ground war threat. Russia's new strategy of aerial attacks against civilian targets and infrastructure follow an attack on a bridge between Russia and Crimea, an attack which Russia blames on Ukraine. And even as NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg assured CNN's Christian Amanpour that NATO is not a party to the conflict, he also asserted that attacks on NATO infrastructure would result in a united and firm response. Russia's latest attacks could have the greatest impact on Ukraine's civilian population going into the winter months. The Associated Press reported today that Ukraine's power and water supplies are under attack in what the country's president, Vladimir Zelensky, said is an expanding Russian campaign to drive the nation into the cold and dark and make peace talks impossible. Overcoming that could pose a challenge for Russian and Ukrainian human rights officials who met for the first time on Monday. For U Central News in Edmond, I'm Mari Blair. Thank you, Mari. And concerning Ukraine, we have more news to go along. Around 30 percent of Ukraine's power stations have been destroyed within the past week by the Russian military. The president is asking residents to restrict their use of energy and water if they still have it, especially during peak hours. And it has been very cold outside. You're having to break out the winter coats for the first time this season. But how long will that stick around? Stay tuned. I'll come up with that coming right up after this break. Stay tuned. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Well, UCO's annual business fair was held today here on campus, and our own Tanner Pippin has the story. Let's toss it over to him. The career fair welcomes students and alumni that are looking for full-time and or part-time jobs. 
The fair was an opportunity for students to connect with professionals in the fields of banking, finance, insurance, real estate, and many more. Yeah, it's been a great opportunity for me to talk to quite a few people in the finance and insurance industries and kind of greater connect with them as well as pass out a couple of resumes. Many of the booths also had internship opportunities available for those that are looking for experience. And if a new job is not a reason to attend, a free slice of pizza was available to anyone that signs in at the Student Success Center. Reporting from here on campus, Tanner Pippins, U Central News. Thank you very much, Tanner. And coming up right now, we're going to have uh, a detailed look at weather, and CJ Craig is going to bring us the latest. Thank you, Jackson. Well, <clears throat> going into this week, we've seen some colder temperatures than what we're used to. Some Arctic air has made its way into Oklahoma. And right now we are sitting at about 56 degrees here in Edmond. But let's go ahead and take a look at our weather headlines coming up this week. We do have a freeze warning that is in effect tonight over the metro area. So the temperatures will drop below 32 degrees for the first time this season. That's why that freeze warning is in effect. The winds will be dying down as we start to go into next week. Uh, those winds will start to come down. We start seeing some 5 to 10 mile per hour winds going into the weekend. And we are also going to see some warmer temperatures as well, uh, climbing back up into the 70s and 80s later this week. Let's go ahead and take a look at current conditions around Oklahoma. <clears throat> And as you can see, it is a very cool, very chilly day across most of the state. Lots of temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Miami up there in the northeast sitting about 47 degrees. They're pretty chilly up there. Uh, but for Oklahoma City, 55. Enid, 54. Guymond up there at 62. Very chilly. We see, we're seeing that Arctic air start to kind of settle into Oklahoma. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our lows for tonight here in Edmond. We have a low of about 32 degrees uh, just at the freezing point. That's why that freeze watch and freeze warning were put into place. Uh, the winds are going to die down as well, blowing at about six miles per hour. Humidity is going to jump up just a little bit. That's what you get whenever you go into the night with all that moisture starting to cool down over the state. About 30 to, or 30% humidity, and we don't have a chance for rain tonight. But we do have a chance for rain coming up later in the week. We'll tell you more about that as we come across it. Let's go ahead and take a look at lows for the state of Oklahoma tonight. And as you can see, lots and lots and lots of 30 degree, 20 degree weather days uh, for us tonight. Uh, Tulsa sitting at about 27 degrees. Miami all the way up there at 18 being the low. They are going to be very frigid tonight. Oklahoma City 32, Woodward 30. Altus all the way down in the southern part of Oklahoma going to get down to 33 as well. So we're going to be very cold across the state of Oklahoma tonight. However, tomorrow it is going to warm up just a little bit from what we've seen today. Oklahoma City sitting about 64 degrees. Clinton 68. Miami is going to rise up just a little bit again to about 57. And in the southern and western parts of the state, we are going to see 70 degree temperatures. However, they won't stay around for long. They will start to get warmer. But this is your forecast for tomorrow morning here in Edmond. So at 7 a.m. it's going to be a very chilly, very cold 33 degree morning. Uh, so you might want to grab one of those heavier coats that you have because it is going to be very cold tomorrow morning. And then going into noon, we're going to heat up just a little bit, about 52 degrees under sunny skies. And then going into the evening when the sun starts to set, we're going to see about 60 degrees right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at your seven day forecast coming up real quick. And we've got a lot of 80 degree weather coming up on the weekend. So Thursday into Friday, that's when we're going to see the biggest jump up in temperature back to the warmer temps of October that we're not quite used to. I know some of you guys have been waiting for fall to stick around. However, we are not quite out of the woods yet with that warm weather. And then on Sunday and Monday, we do have a chance for another storm system to make its way through Oklahoma. We have a 30% chance on Sunday and then a 40% chance on Monday that we will see some rain. So obviously, we're going to be warming up. However, that might not be sticking around very much longer. That's all that I have for weather. I'm going to toss it back over to Jackson. Thank you very much, CJ. No tropical coconut or pineapple weather coming up anytime in the future. But coming up after the break, Lauren Henry is going to have more for us on social media. You won't want to miss it. Ways to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier.
Youth Century News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room. And so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. Youth Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Hello, I'm Lauren Henry, here to bring you everything you need to know to stay in the social media loop. Rapper and artist Kanye West, who now goes by Ye, has agreed to buy the social media platform Parler. The app was released in 2018 and is popular among conservatives. Parler claims to be an unbiased social media and a place where users can speak freely without the fear of losing their platform. The platform is comparable and has a similar setup to Twitter, where users, users can make posts, share, and interact with others. A woman has also taken to TikTok to warn viewers of the dangers of hiking near wild animals. Rebecca Clark was hiking alone at the Cape Rock Canyon State Park Trailway in Texas when she came across a group of bison. As she was trying to pass by, she was charged and attacked by the bison. Clark got all of this on video and is sharing to give others information that could prevent them from being caught in the same situation. And so many movies have hit the big screen recently, but how do they measure up and how much are they making in box office sales? Here's a breakdown of just how well or not so well those new releases have been doing. Didn't ask how you were doing. Amsterdam fell to fifth place on ticket sales of $2.9 million. The Woman King held steady in fourth place, earning $3.7 million. Lyle Lyle Crocodile dropped to number three, taking in $7.4 million. After two weekends on top, Smile fell to second, but $12.4 million pushed the horror flick past the $70 million mark in domestic box office. <laughs> Halloween Ends began its run in first place with $41.3 million, less than expected, but still the best debut of any film since Nope back in July. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's Halloween season again, and viewers everywhere have loved getting to see Michael Myers back to terrorize the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois. In the most recent release of the Halloween trilogy, the original Halloween aired back in 1978 and has been a successful franchise ever since. But is this really the end? In television news, a fresh season of American Horror Story NYC is set to debut tomorrow. This will be the 11th season of the popular television show created by Ryan Murphy and will star Billy Lord, Dennis O'Hare, Leslie Grossman, and more. Viewers will be able to watch on FX or stream on Hulu. And in local news, Oklahoma City is restoring the Diné building. Originally, the building was to be de demolished for Brahms to be built. But after protests from the community, a renovation is now in the works. The historic building is located on Classen and housed businesses like the Classen Grill and the High Low Club. Plans for the renovation have been posted on social media. And I don't know about you guys, but I was so, so curious about the new Parlor app. I decided to check it out, and I noticed a few big names like Ray J, Kim Kardashian, of course, Elon Musk, and it even says when someone made their profile, and Elon made his back in 2018, which I think was really, really interesting. Oh, Parlor is definitely an interesting concept. You're inviting a lot more conversation, potential a lot more uh, debatable content coming on there. You're not going to be as censored as maybe Twitter has been in the past with being able to censor or uncensor profiles as they, de as they see necessary. And honestly, the biggest part of this story is that Parler is still around. The fact is, I mean, I hadn't heard about Parler until Kanye decided to buy it, but you know, obviously it's good that they're sticking around. They are sticking around, and you should too. You should stick around because when we come back from break, Patrick Talbert is going to bring us a sports update. Don't go anywhere. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. 
Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back Broncos fans, I'm Patrick Talbot and this is your Tuesday Sports Update. Let's go ahead and get started on the football field with the UCO Broncos where after an impressive win over Fort Hayes State on Saturday, UCO Broncos are now in the midst of a four game winning streak and are now five and two on the season. Uh, very excited about the win. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, UCO hasn't had a great record versus Fort Hayes State in the last six years. I think they've beat them once in the last six or seven years. So, you know, we were very excited about that. And after an explosive game, Broncos quarterback Stephon Brown was named MIAA Co-Offensive Athlete of the Week. Brown comp completed 26 of his 33 passes for 381 yards and three touchdowns. I asked Coach Durrell about the reaction around the team to Brown, Brown receiving this award. Uh, great, because it, again, if you look from week one to where he is right now, I mean, it's a total transformation. Um, and that has everything to do with him, his work ethic, his mental toughness, uh, his grit, uh, his, his continued ability to try to learn. And the Broncos are now in a four-way tie for second place in the MIAA. The Joes are on the road this week in Topeka, Kansas, taking on the Washburn Ichabods. Now to the NFL, where an AFC West matchup between the LA Chargers and the Denver Broncos last night for Monday Night Football. Story of the night and the story of the season, in my opinion, how bad the Broncos and Russell Wilson continue to be. Russell Wilson and the Broncos continue to struggle gaining any momentum whatsoever, and the defense can only hold out for so long. That was ever more evident last night. Wilson completed his first 10 passes for 116 yards and a touchdown, and that was just in the first quarter. Looked like things were going well. After that, Wilson just went five for 18 for 72 total yards. He was also sacked three times. Justin Herbert and the Chargers, meanwhile, took advantage of that by managing their way down the field multiple times and relying on their injured special teams unit to keep them in the game and then eventually win them the game on a game-winning field goal by a score of 19 to 16. Chargers move to four and two on, this, on the season and stay in that discussion for the AFC West with the Chiefs. Meanwhile, the Broncos fall to two and four, continuing to distance themselves from that conversation. Now to the MLB, for a second time this series, a game between the Yankees and the Cleveland Guardians was postponed due to inclement weather last night. Fans had to wait around for three to four hours before the MLB finally called for the game to be rescheduled to this afternoon. Yankees are coming off a big game four win in which ace Garrett Cole went seven innings and struck out eight batters on 104 pitches, giving up just two runs. Game five ongoing in the Bronx right now. The winner of today's game gets on a plane tonight and heads to Houston to play the Astros tomorrow. No break whatsoever. 
Astros, meanwhile, they're enjoying their break as they're coming off a sweep of the young studs in Seattle. And man, that Astros pitching, impressive to say the least. Regardless of who wins this afternoon between the Yankees and the Guardians, I like the Astros to advance to the World Series. And now to the NL, where if you asked me two weeks ago who I would have picked to make the respective championship series and, you know, much less the World Series, which one of, te which one of the, all the teams would do that? My last two teams in the entire list of the MLB playoffs would have been the Philadelphia Phillies and the San Diego Padres. You know, but here we are. They're both in the NLCS and everybody else is at home. Phillies are coming off of a series win over the defending World Series champs, the Atlanta Braves, and the Padres just beat the undisputed regular season best team in baseball. Game one gets going tonight on Fox, and I've been wrong about everything on this side of the bracket thus far, so we'll just go with the gut, and the gut's telling me the Phillies because the city of the brotherly love is hot right now. Between the fighting Phils and the Eagles, give me the Phillies in seven. The Oklahoma City Thunder open their season on the road in Minnesota tomorrow night. Storyline for the Thunder this season, development, development, development. And that's not a fancy phrase for acceptable losing or tanking. They have a ton of young guys who are going to add on to the experience they already have. Or in the case of rookies like Jalen Williams and Usman Jang, you're diving in head first this season and you're gonna get a lot of run. OKC will not be the doormat of the NBA this year. Assuming the team stays healthy this year and you get a full season of SGA with Dort, Giddy, Trey Mann, and all the others, the Thunder are going to bring the very best against every team they face this season. Their over-under for wins was set at 23 and a half. I'm optimistic and I took the over. This team won 24 games last season and they were intentionally tanking. I'm not saying they'll make the playoffs this year or the play-in tournament, but I'm personally excited about this team's future, and I think they're going to give it a good run this, uh, this season. Well, that's all I got for sports today. Let's go ahead and send it back to Jackson and CJ at the desk. Thank you very much, Patrick. And when we come back, we'll have more news and weather for you. Stay tuned. Back to you, Central News, and right now we're going to toss it over to CJ, who's going to give us one last look. CJ, we know you did a great job earlier. What do you got for us? That's right, Jackson. Well, we are going to experience some cold days today. However, that's not going to remain the case. As we move throughout the week, as you can see, going into the weekend, we are going to start to raise those temperatures up just a little bit up into the 80s. We also do have some rain chances as well going into next week. So that is all that I have for right now. I'm going to send it back to you at the desk. Thank you very much, and we were very happy with uh, everything that happened during the show today. Yeah. If you have keen ears and good eyes, you notice I said September in the first block. We're good to have CJ back up here. I meant to say October is the month we're in now. Excuse my mess up, but we're very grateful for everyone tuning in. That's all the time we're going to have today. I'm Jackson Robottom. I'm CJ Craig. And I'm Lauren Henry. Have a great day, Oklahoma.